In this video, we're going to calculate the gravitational potential energy of an object, which is the energy an object has due to its position above the Earth's surface. Another way to think about gravitational potential energy is that it's energy stored within the Earth's gravitational field. After we do a simple example, we're going to learn how to make an energy diagram that represents the energy an object has due to its position above the Earth's surface. So this is going to be a simple example. We're going to have some rock, and this rock is going to be a distance of 10 meters above the Earth's surface. That is, it's going to be able to fall a total distance of 10 meters if we were to let it go from this point right here. Now if this rock has a mass of 10 kilograms, we can find out how much potential energy this rock has using the relationship that says the gravitational potential energy of an object equals the mass of the object times the gravitational acceleration times the distance or the height that object is above the Earth's surface. So in this case, this rock can fall a total distance of 10 meters and it has a mass of 10 kilograms. Now the acceleration due to gravity here on Earth is about 9.8 meters per second squared. That means that any object on Earth that's falling speeds up by 9.8 meters per second per second. Now to simplify the math in this case, let's just approximate this acceleration to 10 meters per second squared. So we can now answer how much potential energy this rock has because it's 10 meters above the Earth's surface. And to do that, we're just going to multiply the object's mass, which is in this case 10 kilograms, times the acceleration due to gravity, which in this case we're approximating to 10 meters per second per second, times the distance that this rock can fall, which in this case is 10 meters. Now when we multiply 10 by 10, we get 100. So 10 times 10 is 100 times another 10 works out to be 1,000. And a kilogram times a meter per second squared times a meter works out to be a unit of a joule. So this rock has a total energy of 1,000 joules. Now one of the reasons we want to calculate the potential energy of an object is to determine how much energy that object can transfer to another object if it were to fall some distance. So this rock, because it's raised a distance of 10 meters above the Earth's surface, has the potential to transfer 1,000 joules of energy to another object. And that's why it's called potential energy, because it has the potential to transfer energy to another object. Now one of the other things we like to do is we like to talk about the total energy, or, or in this case the total mechanical energy an object has, which in this case is the total kinetic energy plus the total potential energy of this object. Now in this case, if this rock is motionless, this object has no kinetic energy. All of its energy is stored or potential energy. And what we like to do is we like to develop a way to keep track of this object's total energy. So if we know this object has 1,000 joules of stored energy and its kinetic energy is zero joules, and it's zero joules because this object we're assuming is resting motionless, then its total energy, which is the sum of its kinetic plus its potential, will work out to be 1,000 joules as well. So we've come up with a clever way of how to keep track of an object's total energy. So in this case, this object has zero kinetic energy, but it has all potential energy. And so what we can do is we come up with these bar graphs to keep track of this object's total potential energy. So all of this object's kinetic energy plus all of this object's potential energy equals which equals all of this object's mechanical energy, which in this case is not very interesting because this object has only potential energy, and so the potential energy in this case equals the total mechanical energy. So in the next video, we'll take a look at how much energy this rock has after it falls some distance.